Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. We would like to thank you for joining us for the 32nd edition of the Annual Investment Meeting Webinar Series. My name is Karen Dizon and I'll be your MC for today. The Annual Investment Meeting is the largest investment platform in the world. An initiative of the UAE Ministry of Economy, AIM has been promoting a healthier global economy by linking investment opportunities to fast-growing economies under six key pillars foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment, small and medium enterprise, startups, and future cities, with a special events, one belt, one road. Just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. If you experience any issues with your audio or video during the webinar, just refresh your browser and that should take care of everything. And if you have any questions during the presentation, please do feel free to post your questions in the chat box as we will have a Q&A round with our speaker at the end of the workshop. So the topic for today's webinar is business survival now. A live interactive one-hour workshop created for and with small businesses and entrepreneurs to help them identify quick fixes for survival and discover new opportunities for transformation and growth. So the link to download the PDF file will be shared in the chat shortly. And please do download the PDF file, which will be used during the live workshop. So today we are joined by Mr. Hani Risk, founder of No Biz Innovation Studio. Mr. Hani is a Berlin-based experienced strategist running NoBS, an innovation studio that helps team and companies solve real challenges, create meaningful products and services, and deliver mindful user and customer experiences. So over the last 10 plus years, he has led in-house UX and products team that various startups and has created and managed products and services for large corporations such as Volkswagen. He has also co-founded a startup called So Much More that was later acquired by Urban Sports Club. Mr. Hani mentors startups and gives regular talks on experience, strategy, and innovation. And so, Mr. Hani, the stage is yours. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, everyone. Good day. I'm not totally sure where everybody is uh, joining us from today, but I'm hoping you're hoping you're having a great day so far and that you will have um, a great day to come still. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Karen, for this great introduction. I am honored and really pleased to be with you today um, and to run this workshop with you all. Um, as mentioned, the workshop topic is called, uh, or the workshop itself is called Business Survival Now. I will give you a few um, <clears throat> a few insights into you know this workshop what it's all about and how it came to be um in a second um i will share my screen really quickly and you will be able to follow with me there then i have some slides prepared and we have some you know here i just need a quick sign to see whether or not you can see my screen um so hey if you can just give me a nice indication over chat or with a thumbs up or something it would be great yes we can see your screen super thank you all right, so yeah, welcome everybody again. Uh, my name is Hani, I am Lebanese, but I'm based in Berlin um, for the past 10 years now. Um, and I run a small innovation studio called NoBS. Um, I am an experienced strategist, so my background is initially in computer science and then in human computer interaction. So my background is, or my the majority or the longest period of my career, the last 10 years has been in uh, UX and user experience and in product management. So I've always tried to mix both these roles at startups and at big corporates to um, always focus on what my customers or what my users need and require and find the best ways to work with different people from different teams and with designers and come up with innovative ideas and build things in a smart way. Um, so as mentioned, I did that for um, eight years at different startups here in Berlin. Um, I started as an intern writing my master's thesis and went all the way up to founding my own startup. So I worked as a UX designer, as UX lead, as product manager, as a head of product, as a head of UX, head of design, blah, blah, blah. And then um, at some point, I also founded my own startup called So Much More and was later acquired by a bigger one here in Europe called Urban Sports Club. Um, I have also done two years of work at Volkswagen, at VW, the car company, in uh, UX strategy and innovation, where we worked on really big projects and tried to find ways to come up with new uh, use cases for technologies and uh, for mobility technologies or how to 
uh, uh, you know, make mobility a bigger part of our everyday life and make it more connected digitally with our tools and our ecosystems that we use. Right, and um, I started NoBS, as mentioned, uh, almost two years ago uh, here in Berlin, um, after realizing that I want to jump back to do my own thing again. Uh, I will tell you a bit more about NoBS, but since then, or even before then, even when I was still at my jobs, I have been running workshops called Design Sprints, which are a four or five day uh, uh, template for design thinking. And I've been running those since 2016. I've run a little more than 50 of those since then. So NoBS, I guess uh, you could all figure out what the name stands for. Um, it really comes from me wanting to communicate or me wanting to share my best learnings and my best experiences from both the startup world from and from the corporate world and also from working and having worked as a freelancer or as a consultant uh, and having worked with agencies and with consultants previously. And what I wanted to do was to come up with a way where I can offer my best services, my best knowledge, my best tips, um, of course, in the area of uh, 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 design, in the area of product management, of innovation, of digital transformation, you name it, uh, customer experience, of course. But I wanted to do that in a way where I can offer my best value to my clients in the cheapest and the fastest and most effective no BS way ever. So uh, in order to do that, what I focus on is workshops that are short, but very highly effective. One of those workshops are the design sprints that I just mentioned earlier. It's a four or five day process that helps teams, uh, you know, uh, come up with solutions for challenges that they have or discover which solutions they have and come up with ideas, uh, which, which challenges they have and come up with solutions for them. Uh, it helps teams validate ideas, business ideas that they've had in mind. It helps teams prototype and, and work together and align and just go from a state of confusion and endless discussions and meetings to a uh, validated, a market validated solution with their target customers in less than five days, either in four or five days, which saves you as a team three to six months of money and time and lots of other resources uh, just to validate whether or not what you're building is right. Um, other things I do offer a lot of are one or two day workshops, mostly on a strategy level, basically, but uh, covering the areas of user experience and customer experience strategy. Uh, uh, innovation, idea validation, digital transformation, brand strategy, and also a very short workshop similar to this one actually that we're doing now, but focused really more on helping teams get unstuck and get done and like just figure out what they need to be doing next, get focused, get unstuck, look at the big picture and come up with an action plan in an hour or two. So I offer a lot of these sort of very short, I wouldn't call them intense, but I would call them very effective. They're very active and very effective workshops. And the whole point is to help teams move faster, to help, to help teams avoid meaningless discussions and save time and save resources and build a better working culture altogether, right? So some of the companies that I've worked with uh, um, at NoBS include the United Nations, Adobe, VW, the car company, Saab, the car company, Deutsche Bahn, this is the German railway system, Siemens, which you all know is really big in Europe for telecom, SAP, Roche. So these are mostly bigger names and then I have smaller or let's say startup accelerators similar to Fraunhofer Ventures, uh, similar to Beritech in Lebanon, similar to a whole bunch of different ones and some other smaller scale startups here in Berlin, Caracare, which is a health tech startup uh, that helps with digestion uh, uh, issues for like, or like provides a uh, companion app for patients of digestive uh, uh, health. Um, Mush Labs is a biotech company that is producing the future of food in a very sustainable way in the lab uh, from mushrooms. And uh, Upreach is a nice photo platform or a digital photo booth platform with a whole bunch of um, ecosystem capacities and features on top. So yeah, it's quite diverse, I would say, like the, the types of clients that I take on. But to me, what really matters is that they're working on something real, they're working on a meaningful challenge, they're working on something worth investing time and energy into, and to help them, of course, come up with a meaningful solution to it and not just build an app or a website or whatever comes to mind. To me, it's really about understanding what the market needs, what the customer needs, and what the business needs, and find a way to balance all of those and make sure they're all happy and make sure that we learn and we work in a smart way. So we learn and we don't spend any extra cent on minute or minute 
than we actually have to. Cool. So yeah, that being said, uh, that's all for my introduction for today. I think we can kind of cut to the chase right away. So I trust that you have downloaded this PDF so far. Um, I guess I'll get the confirmation in a second. I'll tell you really quickly about this exercise. So this business survival now is an exercise I came up with uh, back in March. So right after or right when the lockdown started taking place in Germany. And what I was thinking was that very honestly, uh, um, uh, I realized that I am very privileged, like many of us, to be able to resume my work online, to be able to take my work from home, to be able to go on with my business, regardless of um, you know, all the measures and all the, um, um, excuse me, like all the measures and all the, uh, just basically all the changes, all the lifestyle and behavioral changes that came as a result of Corona. And so I realized that I can still do my work, but there are so many businesses out there that do not have this luxury that are still like their whole essence of their business counts on, you know, people coming to their store or being in person with people or, or, or uh, offering personal services to people. So in many cases, um, super, in many cases, sorry, I was just checking the message. So in many cases, you have businesses that were paralyzed. You had businesses that had to stop. You had businesses that like their whole business model just crumbled as a result of Corona. And at the same time, you had businesses who were realizing that, oh, I can, or I, you know, people realizing that there is potential for new business, or you had people realizing that I can somehow play around with my business to make it work for the current state. So what I did during this time was I was reaching out to the small businesses in my neighborhood here in Berlin, because I was sincerely worried that they would uh, have to shut down because of the virus. So I was reaching out to bakeries, to bookshops, to very small uh, startups that are not necessarily purely digital, but have a physical element as well, um, to barbershops, to restaurants, to any sort of small business around me that I know that I have a personal relationship with and that I just felt that, hey, try to help them with whatever way you can. And, and you know maybe this could, could help them save their business. So we had lots of conversations with them. We ran different exercises with different businesses. And at some point I started noticing patterns, right? Like I started noticing common concerns, uh, uh, common needs for certain exercises. And based on all this feedback that I was getting with these different people that I was talking to, I was able to streamline the different exercises that we use and come up with like a one hour template or one hour exercise that you are seeing now that any team, any small business, any entrepreneur, any startup can really use to, uh, um, I mean, I use the drastic name, which is business survival now. Um, the whole po po point was to help small businesses stay alive or find ways to stay alive during the Corona pandemic or during the lockdown. Um, but this workshop really is great for any business that's trying to refocus, for any business that's trying to figure out, you know, what can I make money from? What else can I make money from? Uh, uh, how can I keep this business floating? What can I do right now? It really focuses on the short-term, short-term, short-term changes that you can be making in order to keep your business alive or try to keep it alive, right? So this was basically tried and tested with many businesses, but again, it could be very subjective. Maybe some exercise could not make sense to you. Totally fair. But um, I think it's a great exercise to get the idea engine flowing, to get you and your team to get on the same page, to get aligned and start generating solution ideas. Cool? So... As mentioned, it is a one or an easy one hour workshop created to help small to mid-sized businesses, one, identify quick fixes and immediate wins for surviving tough times, like we are surviving now or we were surviving now, or actually I'm from Lebanon and we are still trying to survive this right now. Two, um, after the explosion last week, of course, two, um, to help people and small size businesses to discover new opportunities for transformation and growth. So it's not just about what I can fix right now, what do I have to change about my business? It's also here to help you find new areas that you could maybe capitalize on or new opportunities that you could transform towards and grow in, all right? So to cut to the chase, it's a really easy exercise to follow through. I will be guiding you through it now. Each exercise has time. I will be timing every exercise. You just have to listen to me. 
and I promise you we'll get this done on time. Um, if you are a team, I would like you to be working together. If you're individuals, uh, um, you can also wor work alone, but preferably this is something you do with more than one person so you get more opinions. But of course, this is something that works for solopreneurs or freelancers or consultants or a one-person business, right? All right, so I'm going to move forward. Basically, it's an 11-step exercise. I will take you through them one by one so we can skip the slide, and it will get us to a nice prioritized action list of what you can be doing right now. All right, if everybody is ready, I will start with exercise one. I'm gonna explain it quickly and move on. I might change the timing. So on each slide, you will see the time of the exercise, the duration, but I might change things differently. You will see how much time you have for the exercise here. I try to be as clear as possible in the text that you have all the instructions, but I will be guiding you through those as well. Okay, so if you're doing this on PDF, you can write down your, your answers on pen and paper. Uh, you can write them down on comments on the PDF so they appear as posted. If you have this printed, it's even better. What we, need to, what we want to be doing right now is I want every person to be thinking on their own and writing down their own ideas. And I want you to write each idea separately. So imagine you have post-its. I want you to write one idea per post-it. If you're doing it on a regular piece of paper, just one idea at a time, just make sure to separate them, do bullet points, okay? So we are going to start with the first exercise now. I'm going to cut down the time on this a little bit. And here, I want you to start thinking about all the strengths that your business has, right? So think about what your business is best known for. Think about your most popular offering. Think about what you are really good at. Think about what uh, what sort of things do you know? What sort of knowledge do you have that customers could be interested in learning about, right? Think about those. I just want to, this exercise is a great way to start on a positive foot. Think about those and please write those down one idea at a time, okay? I will give this exercise three minutes and we'll take it from there. If you have any questions, please write me and uh, the team will be forwarding your questions to me. I'm gonna try to put some music in the background just to make things a bit more lively. If it's too high, too low, please let me know as well. It should be okay.
Time is up. Cool. Was this fast? Was this intense? I hope it stressed you out just a little bit. I just wanted to push you slightly, a little bit to the edge because um, the whole point of this exercise is really not to put all your ideas out there, but to get the most important ones out there. So don't worry about not having enough time to share everything. Your most important ideas are going to come first. Do not worry about it. Okay. Now that we finished this, I want to move on to the next exercise, which is very similar, but rather than just listing your business strength, I want you to list your business assets. So I want you to list and think about all the different things that your team or your business or you yourself own, that is of course employed for your business or that you have or that you have control of that could be used in one way or another for the business. These could be skills, these could be experience, so these could be soft skills, these could be something intangible, could also be the space that you have for your business, the office, the, the, the warehouse, the factory, the building, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is. It could be the, the processes that you use, let's say you, you have some uh, delivery service and you have already your own logistic networks and service running. You know, think about that as its own asset. Your logistics are an asset as well. Uh, think about your item, your inventory, your, your stock. Think about all the stuff that your business owns. So really think about all your assets um, and just write them down individually. Because right now we're just thinking about all the great things that you have going for you. And these we're going to be using later to come up with solutions. All right. So all the things that your business uh, or your team owns could be physical, could be non-physical could be intellectual, totally up to you. Try to list as many of those as you can. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna give this again another three minutes. We don't need to go for uh, five minutes, in my opinion. And the timer is on the screen, timer has started, and I will let you know when you have one more minute remaining. The music, I suppose you have music too. One minute remaining.
Alrighty. Again, time is up. Hope you're able to write down your best stuff. Um, again, if you have any questions, any comments that you would like to pass to me right away, and I'm fully responsive, please write those um, to your team or please write those to the, to, to the moderator on your app and they will be forwarding them to me. I am not on the same platform with you, so I cannot see what you're writing in your questions or in your chat box. So these have to be communicated to me. If you have a question, if you have any comment, if you want me to give you some, uh, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna give you more time. But if you have anything, any message you want to communicate, please let Zoheb or Karen know or the AIM team and they will communicate that to me. Thank you. Cool, so now moving on to exercise number three. Now we are moving a little away from the positivity and now we're moving more towards the uh, challenge space, towards the problem space, right? So right, down, right now, I want you to write down the problems that you are facing from a business point of view. So I want you to write down the problems that your business is facing, right? So what problems do you currently have? Uh, why are you losing business? What issues are you facing? I don't want you to think necessarily about customers, but in general, what are your biggest business challenges right now? What are the most stressing business threats that you can think of at the moment that is basically slowing down your business or choking your business or not letting you grow, perhaps? Think about all the problems that your business is facing, right? Again, for this, I will give you three minutes and we can get started now. I'll let you know when you have a minute for me. So I have 30 seconds remaining. is up great i hope this went smoothly for you um again we're gonna jump to a second similar exercise right now which is 
really about your problems again, but this time, actually, no, it's not about your problems. This time it's about your customer's problems. So I guess, of course, this is something that is affecting your business. Of course, these are problems that are affecting your business, but I do not want you to think about them now from your perspective as a business owner. I want you to put yourself in the shoes of your customer or think yourself as a customer. We're all customers at the end of the day, even if you're a business owner. Think of yourself as, in, uh, as your own customer or as a customer in general or a user. And think about the problems that you could be going through right now. Think about the challenges that you might be facing. Again, when we did this, it was Corona. So if you're a cafe, for example, and you're running this exercise, one of the biggest challenges that you have with your customers is that nobody wants to come to a cafe and hang out there. Nobody wants to leave the house. Nobody wants to... Uh, people are worried about hygiene, people are worried about infection, people are worried about distancing. So really, these are all issues that affect your business, but I want you to think about them from the shoes or from the perspective of your customer. What are their current problems and what could be stopping them from purchasing from you? Okay, again, this is an individual exercise, each person working on their own ideas, even if you're part of the same team. I want each person to write down their own ideas and not discuss them and not think about them together. And we're going to take another three minutes for this. I'll let you know when the one minute mark is there. So one minute remaining. seconds. And time is up. Great. How is it going so far? Keep sending me feedback through your chats. I want to I wanna hear some feedback from you. I can't see you, unfortunately. I can't talk to you, unfortunately. So I want to get some feedback. How is it going so far? Type something in. Type something in. Zoheb, I needed to forward those messages to me.
I'm getting zero messages, so I'm just gonna move on. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> wow. All right, so now that we have done those, so, so far what we've done is we looked at all the positivity or all the uh, strong, uh, uh, all the strong points that you have, all the strengths that your business has, all the assets that your business has, all the problems that your business is facing and all the problems that your customers are facing, right? So that's already giving us a nice idea of the scope of things we're looking at. Now, what I want you to do is take all that you've written from exercises three and four. So all the problems that the business has and the problems that the customer have, that the customers have. What I want you to do now is among all of those, I want each of you to take three votes. If you're a team, each team member gets three votes. And what I want you to do is these three votes, use them to vote on these problems. I want you to choose uh, or vote on what you believe are the most important uh, uh, problems that you're facing right now, the biggest problems that you're facing right now. So I want you to prioritize them. You have three votes. You have all the right to use them in any way that you want. You can give the same problem two votes or three votes if you think it's very, 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 very uh, uh, important. Okay, so three votes in total for all the answers that you've written down in exercise three and four. I want you to take three minutes and do your voting and really write down or try to indicate for yourself uh, your top voted problem. So if one, if you're a team and one of your problems got two votes, I want it to be on the list above the one vote one. All right. So top voted ones. Okay. Three minutes starting now or three votes for the top problems that you're facing. Again, I'll let you know at the one minute mark. So your question, it will be covered by the end of the exercise today. So one minute remaining for this exercise.
Cool. Time is up. All right. So I hope you've able you were able to prioritize your biggest problems. Um, I want you to do something now. So if you are a team, so if you're more than one person working on the same thing, um, if a problem got only one vote, I want you to prioritize problems that got two votes because I want you to prioritize problems that you both consider to be very important. So anything with two votes is much more important. Otherwise, you can just list down your main problems one to one. All right, cool. So what you can do is at the bottom of the slide, you can write down your problems and order priority if you haven't done that yet. I will move on to exercise six. I am moving fast, I know, but we have limited time and I wanna make sure you get the most you can out of this. So right now, and this is a very important exercise of design thinking. And this exercise, this whole workshop actually is based on design thinking, okay? Uh, a very important thing now, so you have written down problems. When you think about a problem, when you say, um, uh, when you think of, when you read a problem, when you hear it, when, when you interact with it, it's just so negative, it's just so no, that you feel like you're, you hit a block, you hit a wall, and you do not know how to move on because you are reading something that is very negative, that is just there to convince you that this is something that cannot be fixed. So what we do in design thinking as a result, is we take those problems that we have written down and we change the formulation of the sentence, like we change the format of the sentence into a question. And we start the question with how might we? That's why we always write HMW, how might we? So I have given this example here of our products are only available in our store. This was an issue that the bookstore near my house had. They're like, yeah, we can keep selling books, but people come to our books to discover, to our store to discover the books, and they do not know what we have to sell unless they come to the store. So their biggest problem was that our products are only available in our store. So we changed that into a challenge statement, into a how might we question that says, instead of just saying our products are only available in our store, so people cannot reach it, we say, how might we allow customers to explore our product collection from their homes? So you're changing it in a way where you're still expressing the core of the problem, but you're saying it in a way that is pushing you or that is encouraging you to come up with an answer rather than just, uh, uh, here's a problem, solve it. No, we're saying it as a question. Whenever you read a question, you think about answers and you're putting it in a nice way to help you solve these questions that you have. So what I would like you to do for now and uh, because of time is I want you to take from exercise five, from the last exercise, we prioritize those problems, right? We do not have time to deal with all of them. I want you to choose the biggest problem that you have, either the one with the highest number of votes or one that you believe is the most important one. And I want you to write it down and then write it down as a how might we question. I think this example here is a great one to guide you through it. I do not want to waste any more of your time. Um, just take down the highest voted problem statement from your last exercise and change it into how might we question like you see here on the screen. All right, I'm going to give you another three minutes for this and let you know when there's a minute for me.
Time is a very difficult thing to pin down. There's a famous saying of St. Augustine of Hippo that when he was asked, what is time? He said, I know what it is, but when you ask me, I don't know. One minute remaining, or a little less, actually. seconds. All right. Super. Time is up. I, uh, yeah. I wish I could see all of your work. I wish I could be there with you in the same room. That's why I can you know, just jump around between your desks and your notes and see what's going on. But I trust that you're able to manage this. And I'm going to move on to the next exercise. What I want you to do now, and I'm going to give us a little less time for this, um, is I want you to get inspired. And I'm not saying this in an abstract way. I very simply want you to go to exercise one, exercise two. So all the strength and assets that you mentioned, just go there, read them again. Anything that you find interesting for uh, this solution, so for answering your how might we question, just make sure you remember them. I just want you to think about solution ideas now for inspiration. Two minutes. Think about the exercises, the, the results that you came up with in exercise one and two. And if you want more ideas, you can go to the very end of this PDF where there are some ideas that I have provided based on, uh, like the real ideas that we worked on with clients. So they're divided according to topic, but they might be inspiring to you in terms of solutions. Okay, so this is a two minute inspiration round. Uh, no, you don't have to write anything down unless you want to highlight any big idea that you've seen to remember why you like it. So just really quickly think about what you have. And uh, yeah, trying to get inspired.
All right, time is up. So again, don't stress too much about this. This is definitely useful if you have a lot of how might needs and a lot of ideas. Right now we're doing the live version of this, so I think this must have been enough. But it's great to just start thinking about inspiration, looking at ideas somewhere to start thinking of solutions, which is what we're gonna do next. So right now, I want you to go back to your how might we question that you, like the one how might we question that you prioritized. And I want you to start answering this question uh, like coming up with solutions as an answer to this question. So how might we blah, 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 whatever you wrote down. Now start thinking about the answers for this and write them down. Don't think about how good the answer is. Just write down as many answers as you can. And we're going to take three minutes again for this. The answers could be written in any format. We did the last exercise, the inspiration, to help you maybe come up with more ideas for answers now, just based on the assets just to remember what your company owns to remember uh you know what sort of things do i have that i cannot think of right now maybe my logistics network maybe the fact that all the books in my bookshop are in the store but i have an excel sheet that i use for internal document management why don't i make this excel sheet accessible by my customers so they can see our store selection without having to come to the store you know so now think about solutions answers for the how might be questions Everyone, I'm gonna give 30 seconds more and not one minute. Uh, that is unfortunately because we have to end this in six minutes. So I just want to make sure I can guide you through the rest of the exercise. So just come up with solutions. You can always come back to this and uh, finish it on your own, of course. Unfortunately for this, it's great just to write down ideas for solutions. And now what we want to do is prioritize these solutions. Again, we want to vote on them. This time around, uh, you want to get six votes. I'm pretty sure you can actually do it. You can do it with six votes and you can vote in the easiest way uh, or in the best way, best representative way over your solutions. If you find that you only have a couple of solutions, actually, please scratch all that I've said and use three votes for now because we're dealing with very few uh, cases. So three votes to prioritize your solution. And we're going to do this in one minute. Starting now.
seconds remaining. Hope you voted on those. Right, so now you should have a list of prioritized solutions. Like now you know what are the most important solutions in your opinion. So this leaves us with two exercises. I don't think we're going to have time to go through them, but I want to explain them to you so you can do them on your own. In this next exercise, this is how, so we just did, we just voted on solutions, our top solutions. And now what we will do with this exercise is figure out which one to work on first. So we decided that these are the most important things to deal with, but now we want to prioritize them. Solution one is what we need to do first. Solution two is second. Solution three is third. And the way we do that is by using what we call an effort value matrix. So you take each of these solutions and you think about how much value it will return to you and your business. Is it high value or low value? If it's high, then it's in the top part. If it's low, then it's in the bottom part. Then, after you define its value, you think about its effort. So you think about how much time it'll take you, how complex it is to build, uh, how easy it is to build, uh, how much will it cost you, and so on and so forth. So all the effort that it will take you. And I want you to think about whether it's low effort or high effort to implement the solution. Okay? And then based on that, you will be placing each of these solutions in one of these four squares. So high value, low effort, or high value, high effort, or low value, low effort, low value, high effort. So you have these four combos, and then you place your uh, uh, solutions there accordingly. And then the way you prioritize your ad tasks, which one to go for first, is following this order first. You want to go, of course, for whatever costs you the least effort and returns the highest value. So all the cards that you get here, all the solutions that you get here, these are the ones you do first. And then after that, you do the ones that are high value because, of course, we care mostly about value. You do the ones that are high value, but high effort. So these are ones that will take you more time to finish, but they are very important to do, so you prioritize them second. After that, whenever you have some time and nothing better to do, you can look at the ones that are low effort, but still give you low value. And whatever is high effort, but low value, you don't really care about it, especially when you're talking short term. If it gives you very little, but takes too much from you, you don't want to do that. As a business, you know that better than I do. Uh, you want to maximize your gains, right? And your, and your profit. So doing this, by doing this, you will be able to prioritize what to implement first based on the order one, two, three, and four. And then you have a list of the tasks that you want to finish. And I added a final step that you can always do. And what we do here is, okay, we prioritize the solutions that we want to, uh, that we want to implement, but you still don't know if you're doing the right thing. You still don't know if your solution is going to be effective and you don't know how much time and effort you should invest in the solution because you don't want to dedicate three months of work on one solution that is going to fail eventually. So what we want to do now is those top solutions. For each of them, I would want you to write down actionable steps to test it. Like I want you to think about, okay, I will implement this solution. How soon can I see if it's working? And how can I tell if it's working or not? So you can say if... For this example here, if the library or the bookstore allows customers uh, to access their book database, like if they put it as an Excel sheet online that people can see, uh, they can say that in one week of doing so, uh, I'm gonna get, let's say, 50 book sales because my customers know that they can still reach my business through this website. They can find what they want, send me an email. So it's a very nice way. It doesn't have to be a final target number, but it's just a nice target for you to see at some point in one week or in two weeks, the latest, whether or not you're on the right track with the solution and whether or not it's worth pursuing. You might realize that the solution doesn't really help me. Kill it, move on to the next one. All right, so these two exercises, the last two ones, unfortunately, I would have to ask you to do on your own, but at the same time, you can always go back and do the exercise with all your challenges and do all the how might we rather than just one. But um, um, yeah, and as mentioned, there are some inspirational ideas towards the end, but what I would like from you, I mean, unfortunately, what I can offer you is 
Um, if you're trying this out and you have questions, you of course you are more than welcome to reach out to me. I've shared my um, contacts. I will put them somewhere again so you see them. So I have my handles on Twitter or on Instagram, either my per personal one, Hani Rizit underscore, or No BS Studio. Or you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn or via email which you will find on the website as well. So that's the easiest way. But, uh, um, okay, excuse me. Let me just bring this back up to the front. Whatever baby sounds like. Right. So my handles are here. Again, if you have any question, if you have anything you would like to uh, check on, you're more than welcome to reach out anytime with questions or inquiries or comments. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was useful. Please feel free to use this as much as you can. If you know people who would benefit from it, share it. This is free. This is really just for the community. Um, yeah. So thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for my hosts, Karen, Zohaib, the rest of the AIM team. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Henny. Really helpful and very insightful workshop. Unfortunately, our time is up. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Honey will address all the feedbacks and questions after the webinar, and we will send you his response via email. And again, thank you so much, Mr. Honey. And I would like to thank our audience for joining us and sharing their questions uh, later on. And uh, the link for today's webinar video and presentation will be sent to you via email. And we're also conducting a short survey to get your feedback on today's webinar. And the link to survey will be shared with you via email email and the chat. And so please do visit our website www.aimcongress.com slash webinars to stay up to date for our coming webinars and also follow us on our social media channels to keep yourself updated. So bye for now. Thank you so much, Mr. Honey. And keep Hi, in touch later. Have a great day. Take care. Bye. -bye. bye.